Hi, this is Gadi Elkan with Selig Film News. We're here with the filmmaker behind Frame by Frame, Alexandria Bombach. Alexandria, um, before we kind of jump in the specifics of the movie, um, can you tell us a little bit about your production company, Move Shake? Oh, actually, my production company is called Red Reel, and Move Shake's a series that I did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I read that wrong. <laughs> but you're, you're the concept behind your production company to do social issues and... Can you talk a little bit about that? that? Yeah, Red Reel, I think the big focus of Red Reel, and it, there's also other production companies involved with Frame by Frame. Um, Mo Scarpelli, my co-director, has Rake Films. And, but each of us, Rake Films and Red Reel, we do character-driven films. And a lot of the films that I focus on are uh, about perception and maybe having bigger conversations about our perceptions of cultures or lifestyles or ideas and wanting to do that through human stories, human and character driven stories, because I think that's the best way to have the conversation. So what made you decide to, to tackle this story? I mean, it's, it is amazing to think that a culture that doesn't have photography for a big part of a chunk of its history and it was a crime to take a photo, like just the freedom to, or the lack of freedom to even just do something simple that we yeah. do, I mean, was that the spark or, or was there something more personal? Yeah, I actually um, with Frame by Frame, uh, a, a, it was a big part of it was that perception. I had seen some footage that a friend took and I hadn't been to Afghanistan yet. And it was just, you know, people walking down the street and it was everyday normal life. Um, and it kind of set me back. Um, you know, I was 16 when 9-11 happened and the narrative that we have from this place is very war, suicide bombs, and we don't really get to have, you know, a human connection with Afghans. and once I heard that photography was banned during the Taliban regime up until 2001, um, that seemed like a really interesting topic. And also, <clears throat> who better to tell this, the story of their country than the photographers or the storytellers themselves? So there were a few obvious choices, Farzana Wahidi and Masood Husseini, who are world famous photographers. Um, Najibullah Musafir is the guy who is like an oh, Afghan, um, just oracle of photography, um, w very well respected, and Wakil is a, just, you know, a really, Wakil Kosar is a really passionate photographer that is in the film as well. Is it, I mean, they're open, they're talking about this issue, you, mm -hmm. you've got those interviews, what, talking to them, what, what was some of the most surprising moments of, of what they revealed about what they've had to struggle with, and now the freedom that they do finally have. Yeah, I think what's really great about Frame by Frame and something that we've been really excited about in the last month of screening it, because it just premiered at South by Southwest, mm -hmm. um, is that people will come out of the film and their biggest reaction is, I didn't know. Um, a lot of people haven't seen this kind, this side of Afghanistan. Uh, and our photographers are able to show it through photography and we follow them following their subjects. And so it was, a, it was a process for me too. You know, the first time I went in 2012 with Mo, we you know, were wrapping ourselves up like crazy and just like kind of shaking going over there. And by the second time around, you know, we're eating lunch in the streets and you know, just traveling around um, a lot easier than before. And you just, you kind of have, and hopefully the film does this too, you start to have empathy and, instead of just sympathy and really see this as like a, these four humans as a, as a mouthpiece for this entire country. Yeah, the, you know, the, the country's always been kind of, before even the Taliban, embroiled in, in so many wars with mm -hmm. other big nations, whether it's Russia or us mm -hmm. or however it happens. Um, what is it about this small, it's not small, but this, this area of the world that it just seems to spark such, I don't know, not violence, but it, it's sad that this is all happening in specific parts like Afghanistan. Was it... For someone that, that hasn't been over there, what did you see when you first got there compared to the, the visits afterwards? How did it change over that time? Well, yeah, Afghanistan has been at war for you know over 30 years now with the Soviets, the Civil War, and the Taliban, and now the United States and everybody else. But um, before then, in the 70s, it was a relative time of peace. And actually, since like around 1920, it was a pretty peaceful time. Um, and so we forget about that, and that's some of the images that we do show in the film that really surprise people, like women walking around in mini skirts in the 70s. It was a part of the hippie trail, and I hope it is like that again. Afghanistan's at an interesting time right now. You know, the last, the last 15 years has been amazing in, in that, you know, it's the first time that they've had like a real free press, or an attempt at a free press. Uh, it's really fledgling, but um, 
it's an exciting time. There's a you know a whole new generation that are you know in the streets you know protesting certain things. They're they're amazing. Um, there's amazing groups of people there that are working towards a better future. Even in, within the year span that we went in 2012 and 2013, you know, there's so much growth in Kabul, especially. And um, a, right now is a scary time because international aid and you know troops, um, international media is leaving, pulling out like crazy. All the news bureaus are shutting down. Um, so it's an interesting time for media because. Um, you know, free press is such a huge part of keeping warlords in check and, you know, having a really uh, more solid government. So everyone's kind of holding their breath and seeing what happens next. But um, hopefully this will be a film that people, will, it'll keep Afghanistan in people's consciousness because that is historically that's what has happened before is, you know, after the, the Russians left, after the mm -hmm. Soviets left, Afghanistan was forgotten. Yeah. And so, and his, they called that the Soviets Vietnam. So. You know, we're doing this over and over and over again, um, and yeah, hopefully this time around Afghanistan will be, be on its own two feet and we'll be able to be hippies over there again. <laughs> Is it fun then to be able to showcase it at South By? I mean, that's where, you know, the people behind Dallas saw it and they fell in love with it and mm -hmm. wanted to bring it here. Um, you are giving a chance to hopefully keep this voice alive and not let it, you know, be taken back by something. Can you? What's that experience like for you, being able to showcase this? Yeah, it feels like it happened yesterday. I mean, it, filmmaking is such a crazy thing where you're in an edit room for so long by yourself, and so to, we finished the film like a week before South By, so it was like, and um, it was pretty down to the wire. Um, so it went from like insular in a room by yourself to all of a sudden, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people pack theaters to see the film, and it was an amazing feeling. It's an amazing feeling, but. It's a, like a whole other wave of energy where right now it's this, it's this insatiable need to get the film out there and we're working on distribution and all these different things. But it's a really exciting time and it's really wonderful to connect with different Afghan American groups in the United States, different journalism communities and things like that. Still trying to figure out like in the fall where we can reach out and have bigger screenings and things like that, more screenings. It's interesting, Texas has a, a connection to Afghanistan. I mean, even back to like Charlie Wilson and, and mm -hmm, those yeah. days. Um, showing it in, in Texas, how does that impact, you know, you showing it to people? I mean, it, there's something just slightly different about showing it here in Texas. Yeah, it is kind of crazy that we've had like five festivals and two of them have been in Texas. <laughs> um, it's great. I mean, I love it. I love the different conversations. I love that people come up and are like come up to us after the Q&A and are just like, I had no idea. <laughs> That's it's a great great feeling. Um, and I, we actually went from South by to Atlanta, mm -hmm. which is another interesting state. And we're hoping to do we've done a lot of those things in the south and we hope to like keep keep doing it. It's the it's the places that we want to be. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um what do you, so with so much footage, is there plans to do updates? I mean, do you have a life after as with film wise? Mm -hmm. Like more, more, more cutting? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of behind the scenes that I'm like, are <laughs> going out of my head that I, I would really love to cut little um, shorts and stuff like that. Um, we still are cutting a new trailer right now. Our trailer's from a while back, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, hopefully smaller pieces that can be on different platforms where an 85 minute film can't be. Um, potentially we'd even cut the film down to like a 60 minute level to be more shareable, but we'll see. Educational yeah. use as well? Hopefully, yeah. Um, well, that would be wonderful. Yeah. It would be great. Having, um, I guess, the, the, the chance to do that, um, how much footage did you have? How much footage do you have? I think there was uh, around 250 hours wow, huh. footage. Yeah. And that's you and Mo shooting? That's Mo and I shooting, and that's also um, going through a lot of footage that uh, one of our characters, Najibullah Musafer, mm. the photojournalist, shot during the Taliban regime. Not only photos, but video. Mm. And he gave us all of that footage, so it was a massive responsibility to show it. Um, because no, there wasn't anyone else documenting at that time in the places that he was. So some pretty powerful footage that we had to go through and use in the film. What's the responsibility behind that? I mean, it is powerful footage and you obviously want to show it, but you've got to, you've got to find out how to show it. What, what's that feeling like? Yeah, I mean, respons uh, the sense of responsibility with all of our, our subjects is pretty intense because 
they not only let us into their work lives following the subjects and gaining us access to the really unique access that they have with their subjects being Afghan, um, but also into their homes. And it is a little bit more of a risk for them to be in the film and to you know, show their work in this way. And it was a big trust that they put onto us. And the sense of responsibility to have and a lot of documentary filmmakers have with that, it's like you're showing someone's life story and you, you have to you know, essentially boil down a lot of things to an audience. And yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge responsibility. You're part of the, the Silver Heart competition, yeah. which highlights international cinema, but it, um, it's got some, some heavyweights. Oppenheimer's film is in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, to be a part of that group, that it's, it's a big statement for the film. It's a big statement for you guys. Um, what's it like to be in the same breath as, as Oppenheimer? You guys are on the same level. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know about that. But it, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an honor. I was looking who else was on, on the Silver Heart, and I saw that uh, Look of Silence was on there. And I have yet to see it. I'm just like crawling trying to see this film. I know I'm really excited. And yeah, there's amazing films on that list. And um, it's, it's a real honor. I mean, we're first time feature length filmmakers. So Mo Scarpelli, my co-director, and I. And so this whole thing has been quite the ride and quite the trip, and it's really exciting. So what, what can we expect from you in the future? Hopefully more docs. Hopefully more character-driven docs, yeah. And yeah, being on the road with this film for a little longer. <laughs> Very cool. Well, we're excited to uh, show it to the Dallas audiences, and excited that you're here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. Yay. <laughs>